Hello everyone, how's everyone doing today? Oh, that's my friend over there, the dummy. Let me go and say hello to him. So I go to the dummy, I wave, and the dummy responded by waving back. Let's now go to studio and see how we can do that. So here we are inside Roblox Studio. Basically what I want to do is I want to detect when the player presses a key on the keyboard, specifically the E key. When the player presses the E key, I want the character, the player's character to wave first, and then the, the dummy is going to respond and wave back. Let's now go to our starter player, starter player scripts. We're going to create a local script. In your local script, just enter the following lines. Basically, this entire code here is to detect when the player presses the E key. So if the player presses the E key, we can say print E press. Means the E key is pressed, right? So whenever I press the E key, I expect to see a printed message E press, right? So that's all this is doing. Um, basically, we're, we're using the user input service here. And we're using the input begin event of the user input service. This event is fired every time the player presses a keyboard key or a mouse button. And all this is in our prior tutorial on how to detect a key press or a mouse button click. So if you need more details, you can refer to that tutorial for more details. By the way, this line here is just to check to see if the uh, player is currently chatting. If the player is currently chatting, then we're not going to execute anything down here. So we're just going to skip out of the function. Next, just insert the following lines into your code. On the first line here, we're declaring the dummy and then we're waiting for the humanoid of the dummy to load. Here, we're declaring the player, the local player. And we're checking to see if the character of the player has been loaded yet. If it has, then it's good. We're going to wait for the humanoid. If it hasn't, then we're going to wait for the character to load. This is going to return the character. And then we're going to wait for the humanoid of the character to load. And now add in the following lines. Here, we're just creating the animations for both the character and the, the dummy. So here we're creating an instance, an animation instance. So that's going to create an animation object. And we're loading the animation ID of that object. You can get this number here by creating your own animation. And then you go to Toolbox. You click on your creations. You click on the drop down, select animations. And then you can select any animation you want. For example, if I select the wave animation, I'm going to right click, copy asset ID, and then I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to select this number here, right click and paste into. So that's how you load this animation into this animation object. All right, let me close this window here. Again, we got the animation object. We got, we loaded the animation ID of that object. And now here we're loading the track for the humanoid. The humanoid is the character. So here we got the track, the animation track for the character. On the next line here, we're loading the animation track for the dummy. For the dummy, we're using dummy humanoid. That, that is the humanoid of the dummy. Now all the stuff on how to um, load and play the animation, we also had a prior tutorial on this, so if you like, you can refer to that one for more details. And finally, when the player presses the E key, instead of printing E here, printing E press here, I'm going to replace that with the play animation. So here we're playing the, the track, which is the animation for the character. And then we're going to wait for one second. Then we're playing the dummy track, which is the animation for the dummy. Let's now play and take a look. I'm going to run to the dummy. There's the dummy. He's my friend. So I'm going to go to him and I'm going to wave hi. So I'm going to press E, wave hi, and the dummy wave back. 
All right, so everything is working. We're all done, right? Not so fast. Let's do one more check. We're gonna go to the test menu and we're gonna test with two players. This window here is for player number one and this window here is for player number two. All right, so I'm gonna go to player number one. I'm gonna run to the dummy first. And now I'm gonna go to the second window on the right here. I'm gonna move this guy to the dummy. Let's make sure we see everybody inside the screen. Okay, so now back to player number one. I'm gonna press E to wave to the dummy. And just focus over here now, right? So I'm gonna wave to the dummy. The dummy wave back. But now I'm still using player number one with uh, the first window here, but now focus on the second player's window here. Okay, so I'm still using player number one. I'm gonna press E to wave to the dummy. You see it's waving, but the dummy on player's number two screen never waved back. And the same goes for player number two. I'm gonna press E. So player number two now is gonna wave and the dummy wave back but if we look on the first screen in players number one screen player number two is gonna wave again see he waved and the dummy on this side wave but the dummy on this side does nothing let's now go back to the script and see how we can fix that the reason we're having this problem is because we're using a local script here and our dummy is inside the workspace so you cannot use a local script to change something that is on the server side. In this case, to play an animation for the dummy, we need to use a remote event to fire a remote event to the server side. And then a server script is going to play the animation for the dummy. So let's now go to our replicate storage. We're going to add a remote event. And I'm going to rename my remote event to wave remote event in my local script now i'm going to declare that remote event so i'm going to say local wave remote event equals to game dot replicate storage dot wave remote event and now I'm gonna come down here. So when the player presses the E key, we're gonna play the animation for the character. And instead of playing the, the animation for the dummy here, I'm gonna fire a remote event, which is the wave remote event. So I'm gonna say wave remote event, colon, fire, server. Okay, so that's gonna fire a remote event to the server side. Now we're gonna go to the server side I'm going to go to the dummy. I'm going to add a script. And in our script, we're just going to move everything here to the other side. So let me just copy this. I'm going to copy this remote event to the other side. I'll paste it here. Let me go back to the local script. I'm going to move these two lines it belongs to the dummy i'm gonna cut and paste them to this side all right so we're declaring the um, wave remote event here and we're declaring the dummy you can leave it alone this way or you can say script dot parent because the script is here so the, so the parent is the dummy we can do it either way. We can go down from the workspace to the dummy. And dummy humanoid, we're still gonna wait for the humanoid of the dummy. So that's fine. Let me go back to the local script, see what else we need to do. So let me remove these extra lines. These belong to the character, so I'm gonna leave them alone. We're gonna need the animation. So I'm gonna copy the entire block here and I'll put it over here. We don't need the track for the, the uh, character, so I'm gonna remove that. So here we're creating the animation object. 
we're loading the animation ID and then we're loading the track for the dummy. Let me go back to the local script again. I'm going to remove the dummy track here. We don't need the dummy track here. And now if the player presses the E key, we're going to play the animation for the character and wait for one second. And then we fire server. I'm going to remove this one. We don't need it here because we're going to bring it to the other side. I'm going to insert it right here. So we got the animation object, we load the animation ID, we load the track, and then we're going to play the track. One thing we're missing here is we're going to need to catch that remote event that is being fired from the local script. So we're going to say wave remote event dot on server event colon connect to a function and then I'm gonna move all these inside the function let me fix this up put a tap in there let's now play and take a look so right now we're testing with one player just to make sure that one works first and then we're gonna test with two players okay I'm here I'm gonna press E I wave the dummy wave back. That looks good. Let's now test with two players. Alright, so here we go. This is player number one. This is player number two. And let me go to the dummy. Whoa, I didn't want to do that. So let me run to the dummy first. Okay, this is player number one. Where is he going? This way. All right, so player number one is the one on the right, and this is player number two. Player number two is on the left. That's confusing. <laughs> I should turn it the other way around. Anyway, so this is player number one here. He's the one on the right, right? I'm going to start with player number one. I'm going to press E. He waved. The dummy waved back over here. Let's check the second window here. Still still player number one still player number one is gonna wave we're gonna check the second window player number one again is the one on the right he's gonna wave there it goes and the dummy wave back and now let's check player number two on the second window here so i'm gonna wave player number two is gonna wave now there he goes and the dummy wave back let's check player number two again but on the first window he's gonna wave and the dummy wave back guys that's how you wave to the dummy and have the dummy wave back at you thank you all for watching we will see you again soon in our next tutorial. Take care everyone.